Hello and welcome. We're going to do today D-Day at Omaha Beach. So uh, this game is quite the game. Um, I think I've played more complicated games. I don't know what it is about this one, but I have anxiety with this one. It's a very large board. There's a lot going on within the board. And the steps of a round are very simple. The 90% of what you do on your turn seems very simple. But there are a lot of rules that are very specific to like very specific spots on the board. And you sort of have to remember them all. Or you have to really slow down and think about what you're doing. And um, when I'm doing a video like this, I, I'm usually trying to, um, I mean, I'll share with you. My, my number one thing is, is I don't want to have a long pause. I don't want to have a lot of empty space. Like it's a radio thing, right? You know, radio hosts, um, you know, never want to have empty air, right? So that's how I feel. I also hate having to look up rules all the time because I know that slows down the game and annoys some of you. Um, and some folks have definitely expressed that. And so I have this anxiety that I need to like know everything before I can play. And um, I've just accepted the fact that I'm not going to. So uh, join me at the table. Uh, let's enjoy this game together. I think this is the beauty of a game. And as far as solitaire games go, this might be one of the best solitaire games um, that I've seen. And uh, I love Spirit Island. That one always comes up high on my list. Uh, but it's different. That's a different game. Um, this one is just an amazing game. And I think it's amazing because of the things uh, that it does. And these, this board is the most brilliant functional board I think I've ever seen. Now, with that said, I'm making these real high accolades and com compliments, and I've only played it once before. <laughs> so I did try the basic version of the game, uh, and now I'm gonna try again with you guys here. And I just cannot tell you enough how much fun I had. Um, so I'm hoping to share that fun with you. And then, um, uh, my only other concern is, is it's been like four or five months since I played this. And so, uh, I, again, that anxiety is kicking in because I'm reading the rule book and then I'm skipping sections saying, oh, I already know that part. And then, of course, you know, there's going to be that one section that I uh, forgot about. Um, so uh, I'm not going to start off with some pre-apologies pre or anything. But um, uh, let me jump in. And uh, this is a classic format. If you're interested in gameplay, go to video two. Uh, this will be going over the components and how to set up the game. Um, the other thing I want to point out is I always check to see what other videos are out there for games because um, some of you might know that uh, my goal, even though I've not you know written it down in stone, is I want to do games that nobody else is doing, uh, games that I love to play, but you know they're just not high market. Value so those professional people uh, skip it over because it doesn't make enough money for them to, to be worth the trouble to uh, make a video. And so um, this is one of those games, but there are quite a few videos out there for this one. I think largely because it's an older game. And there is one particular guy, I don't know him personally, but uh, his name is uh, Dan Likos or Likos, L I K O S. Um, he has a video series where he does the basic game, and I can't top that. I mean, he just did a wonderful job. And and so, um, at first, I wasn't even going to do this game, uh, because it's like, you know what, his video is pretty dang awesome. And uh, I highly recommend that you watch that, uh, if you haven't yet. Um, the The things that he didn't do, though, is he didn't show you how to set it up. He didn't show you how to look up the charts. He sort of had them memorized or he had them like off camera and he would just glance over at them and then just tell you the result. And um, so those were two things that I think I can expand upon. Uh, but I know some of you hate that. 
because uh, you think that they drag the game on uh, longer. You just want to see it played. Um, but I also think that those of you that hate it have already stopped watching my channel. So uh, uh, those of you who have stuck around, I think, like the fact that I slow down and explain what's happening. So, uh, so I'm going to sort of ignore the, the feedback about, you know, rushing my game. Uh, the other part is he only did the basic game. And I'm going to try to do the extended game, even though I've never done the extended game. Um, I only played the basic game uh, when I tried this. But uh, let me jump in. Let's go over um, some components. Obviously, we'll talk about the board. Uh, first of all, some things. You're going to want, you know, these uh, climb cliff tokens uh, in their own you know, little container off to the side. Uh, those will be used when uh, you have to climb... Uh, cliffs with your troops. We'll get into those rules later. Uh, another thing to set off to the side are these clear tokens. Uh, some have arrows, some don't. I think they're double-sided. Um, those are for your engineers that are clearing mines off the beach. You will need them. Just set them off to the side. Uh, there's a whole bunch of garrison markers. Um, I don't think... I'm gonna have to look up what those are used for. They're, I don't remember them being used for the basic game, so... Um, so you can set that farther off to the side. <laughs> um, next are the disrupted markers. You definitely need those, and they are either your enemy or your friend. Um, so uh, make sure you have those available. There are going to be just some miscellaneous things. Like, see here, you can see there's three action tokens, and this phase token, and then these, uh, these convoy or naval gunfire tokens. Um, uh, you start the game with, with action tokens already on the board, and in fact, uh, we're going to start with three, and I'm going to make sure that... See, in the basic game, uh, you only get two actions on, uh, on the board for, for each side. And these are... It might be hard to see with the camera, but these are a darker green. So there's a darker green, and then there's a lighter green. And my apologies, I might have them backwards. I'll, I'll fix that in a second, if they are. Um, it's real easy to tell once I start putting troops on, on the game in the setup. But... Um, Normally, you only start with two actions on each side. Uh, with this, you have you start with three, and if, that's if I read the rule correctly, and I'll, I'll go double check on that before we start. Um, but everything else, you just set aside. This little phase marker, uh, it's sort of helpful. It's to show you like what, see the, those little spots here along the game board? Those are all the phases of the game. You start on the left, and you just go to the right. Then the round's over. Then you go to the next round. Start to the left, go to the right. It's a very beautiful uh, and elegant sequence. It's real easy to follow. Um, it's actually really hard to get tripped up over it. Um, this little marker is just to indicate which phase you're on. I don't need it, so that's why I'm not using it. But just explaining to you that that's what it's there for. You're going to have these, uh, these miscellaneous uh, HQ range... And there's going to be some engineering bases and then these command transfers. You're really not going to use them. Uh, the, some of them you're going to use after turn 17, which is going to be many hours into the game. And uh, you don't need to use them now. And then you're going to have a bunch of hero tokens. So those you'll definitely hope to use because those are awesome. Um, okay, so I sort of went over the, the fringe stuff. What are the main things that you need to do? Well, it's a little bit challenging, but the first thing you need to do is there's going to be components like this. This, of course, is an infantry unit, and along the top um, is just a designator of, uh, you know, so it's an Echo 2, uh, I think, 18th Division, 2nd. I'm not a military guy. I, I did work for... Uh, the government and worked with many people in the military, but I never got to this level of knowledge. Um, it's just, the, the number on the top is just its unique designator. Um, there's some important things here uh, to point out. The, the three pips on the left, uh, on this left side here, that is uh, the strength of the unit. It has, basically, you can take three hits before it's destroyed, but at full strength, it has all kinds of powers that it doesn't have at lower strength. So you don't even want it to take one hit. I mean, just taking one hit weakens this unit significantly, but it can take three, is what this is trying to say. And after it takes a hit, you would flip it over and you can see there's two pips on the other side. Um, the next thing you need to know is it's with the first, um, 
uh, first infantry or first division mm -hmm. and you can see here that this left side is the first division and let me focus that a little bit better for you this is the first division and then on the other side is the 29th division and let's get this out of the way north is pointing towards us so uh, we're actually looking at the board from the north direction so that means we're looking south and that means that this is west and that's east so it gets a little confusing but it does write it down here that this is the west sector and that's the east sector so just imagine our compass is just upside down and so you can see here that the first division is in the east sector and uh, it looks like it's one of the darker ones so what that means is I got my action tokens mixed up. <laughs> these, it's not that big of a deal, but these dark action tokens are meant to be used with the darker division, which is the first division. And then the uh, 29th is the gonna have the lighter color green. It's not a big deal, folks, but I will do it just for the sake of doing it. And uh, they did a nice little touch here by adding you know, a, a little compass marker to show that north is this way. All right, so what else do you need to know? Um, that number six at the bottom is its strength when it's in when you're resolving attacks. It's very important. The uh, circle is used for the AI uh, in determining whether or not they hit you or not and things of that nature. Um, it's not important to be a circle or a triangle or something else. Uh, what's important is what's on the card you just drew, right? It either matches or it doesn't match. Sometimes you want it to match. Sometimes you don't want it to match. So it's neither good or bad. It's just, an, you know, a, a shape that goes with it. And then the most important thing for setup is that 16 on the right. So what that 16 means is it's going to come into the game on turn 16. And here's what I mean by that. Um, right along the top of the board here, and I'm going to... I'm having issues with the camera focusing. You can see it goes from turn one all the way to turn 32. So there's, um, there's a lot of turns in the game and during certain turns, there's gonna be certain units that arrive and it, it actually shows that this is 6.15 a.m., 6.30 a.m., you know, things of that nature. So it's representing the, the day of the attack. So there's a lot of different units in the game but the only thing that matters is you must find all the, uh, the units that have those numbers. I'm gonna bring it in here and see if I can focus it again. That number there, see that number one? There's a whole pile of them that start with a, with a one. So they go on turn one. And you can sort of put them on the board or off the board. You do have this little turn marker to indicate what turn it is. So I try to, you know, I'm gonna put it here off board. And so you're gonna have a big stack for turn one. You're gonna have a stack for turn three and four and five. Each have a stack, uh, six and seven. So you can see that the uh, invasion really gets underway at about 645. And then eight and nine. And these are all units that are going to enter play uh, during these turns. So uh, on turn 10 here, you can see there's a general that's going to arrive. There's all kinds of things and units to talk about here. But then after turn 10, we have a bit of a dry spell, and the next one doesn't show up until turn 16. And um, when you're putting the game away or finding a storage, what you want to do is you want those ones to all be in one container and these ones to be in another. And, and the reason is these units I'm putting out now are only used in the extended game. You wouldn't use them in the basic game. The basic game ends on turn 17. So I know uh, there's a bunch that arrive on turn 16, but it really doesn't matter. They're not gonna do anything for you. Um, so uh, anyways, that's, um, that's an important thing to know and understand. And so it goes up to 23, and uh, that's it for setup. Um, there's some more things we have to do, and, and the rule book is pretty good at explaining how to set up. Um, the, um, there's a bunch of tanks here, and they don't have a number next to them, but they also, um, 
the, the rule book, I guess, just explains these. They're, they're like an exception, if you will. You're going to have about, there are eight tanks. And what they're going to do is they're actually going to be, they start the game on the board. And that's the, the difference, is they're going to be already here on the beach, or are trying to get on the beach. So, so, um, so they're going to be going onto the beach. Sorry, that's my dog. Are you okay? <laughs> All right. So what you do is, this says DG2. So um, the beach itself has all these indicators on it. And I think that stands for Foxtrot and uh, Echo something. I, I don't remember, but, but this is like Dog West over here. Uh, so DG2 means it goes right here. So this is an approach box. It's coming over, you know, through the channel and it's going to um, join the battle. And then I have a DG3 and a DW3 and a DW1, a FG2, which is gonna be over here, an ER3, an FG3, and an ER5. So the basic idea is, is at the start of the game, we're gonna land, it's the start of every round, in fact, we're gonna land the troops onto the beach. Then we're gonna do like um, a German fire phase. There's gonna be event cards. There's gonna be, you know, we're gonna follow this path, but then as we go, uh, we're gonna then take anything that's on the stack there, over there in turn one, and on the first turn, they're gonna end up on the beach or on the approach boxes. And then that's what ends our round, right? After we place that. And then we start the next round, landing these ones onto the beach, and then we keep going. Um, I, uh, I do have some player aids to make sure we don't miss any steps with that. Um, but this is a very important part, obviously, of the setup. Uh, these tanks, it's really funny, but I think, from my experience, the best outcome you can hope for is that they get delayed. Like, they're trying to land on the beach, but they're so caught up in the waves that they don't actually land. And when they get delayed, the way you represent that is you take it off the board and then you put it on, like, a future turn up there. So that way they'll come back some other time. Um, I think that is the best possible outcome for them because any tank that actually lands on the beach gets damaged. And um, uh, I can check. I I mean, there's a there's a little chart that we'll look at and we'll, we can verify whether or not there is a possible way for them to land and not be damaged on turn one. Um, but turn one is a pretty shaky turn. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, the next set of components are these. And you can see I have a whole bunch of them and they're in these, these rows. And the way you wanna break them up is, um, so for example, this is A115, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, and then it skips J and it's K, L, and M. And, and so that's for uh, 115 and then you got 116 and then you got 16 and 15. Now what's the, what's the deal with these? Well, first of all, um, some of these are the extended game. So just like before, you can take some of these and make sure they're, they're saved in a different bucket. The other ones are part of the basic game. So you don't need half of these tokens if you're only playing the basic game. That's the first thing. The second thing is, uh, what are they? Um, do you remember uh, that when we were looking at the pips on them, like you might see four pips. That shows that that unit has four strength. Well, I showed that it had two sides, right? So if it was four pips on this side and you flipped it over, it would be three pips on the next side. Well, guess what? This is, you need another token to represent two pips and one, or I guess three pips is the highest strength because here you can see this is a, see that's a single pip. So whatever the A115 is, it's, uh, you know, it's gonna be a three pip uh, strength unit then you flip it over to a two after it's been hit once. And then if it gets hit again, then it comes to this. You have to come find this token because that's how you represent the final pip. Um, you just need two tokens to represent anything that's over two strength. And there's gonna be a few extra outliers. Uh, these are the, um, I think these are like the artillery. Um, so there's some artillery ones that have some strength to them. 
and um, and so they also go over here because uh, they're meant to just come. They're uh, they either come on through an event or they uh, come on through uh, damage, like we said before. The other thing um, that's real easy to identify is see how they have the green stripe through them. Uh, I don't know if that was. I'm assuming that was designed that way, but anything with the green stripe is a, you know, a, a damaged, meant to be a damaged unit. So it's real easy to sort them out if you somehow accidentally get them all mixed together. Anything with the green stripe goes over here. Anything without a green stripe is likely going to go on the board. Um, Cause that's pretty much it. There are no other green tokens anywhere to be found. Unless of course we're talking about these, uh, these engineering and headquarter ones, which I currently have off to the side. Now, the Germans are um, another thing. Uh, you need to, and I'm going to zoom in on this. So uh, you're going to have some, some units that, these are the, uh, these are artillery, right? So you have 88s, you have 105s, and you're going to have uh, some WNs. So these are, uh, it's Weizder nets or I, I don't know, Wiener, whatever. I cannot pronounce it, so I'm not going to try. They're, they're German nests. Let's just put it that way. And so they're the, they're the nests that are actually stationed on the beach the moment you arrive. There's going to be, there's two types of, of uh, tiles. There's these nests, and then there's what's called reinforcements, which are these right here. And the reinforcements will look like just a simple infantry symbol with no WN on it. The, uh, the WNs are real easy to spot. Because you can see they have the WN on the top. Um, so we're going to set these up. The WNs are going to go onto the board uh, before we start the game. These uh, reinforcement ones will not go on the board. They'll be, you know, they represent the forces that don't come until the alarms go off. Okay, so um, so a couple things. You, you have some artillery uh, representations and they should say inactive on the other side. Uh, these are going to go on a special spot on the board. I'm pretty sure I know where they are, but we'll go through them with the rule book to make sure I don't screw that up for you. Um, the uh, the WNs will also, uh, they're going to randomly go out on the board. That's why they're face down. You don't get to see the values. But these 88s and 75s, uh, some of these artillery ones, do have specific spots on the board that they go to, although they'll still be randomized amongst themselves. And what this represents is they're the observers. So this is the actual artillery unit, and these are the observers for the artillery. And, and then you're going to have, like, there's this one that's a rocket. I think that one's a special one that's all by itself. And then you're going to have a whole stack of WNs that those you just randomize and make sure that they're shuffled properly. You're going to have some depth markers. There are going to be these markers called mobile depth. And I guess this is more mobile depth. And then you're going to have what's called building depth. And then you're going to have this WN depth, which are um, there. Sorry, I was zoomed in here. I forgot I was zoomed in. So, um, so there's building depth. And then you're going to have a whole bunch of mobile depth. And then this WN depth. And let me zoom in on those so you can see. Um, so what are they? They're depth markers. Uh, I don't even know how to describe them. They're they're not reinforcements. They're they're basically they strengthen units. So um, the best way to describe it is just explaining how it works in the game. You may have this WN unit, which is going to have a a value on it, right? So this is a so this is a, a WN that has a value of one, right? And then these uh, letters we'll talk about in a second. So then what they could have is they could have a depth unit which goes underneath them. So um, you may know what the strength of this unit is, but that's a mystery. And you have to like have the right things in order to even reveal what's underneath. And you can't defeat the unit unless you defeat both of them. So it takes two attacks to eliminate a unit like this. Whereas this by itself, you can eliminate in one attack. So... It's, it, it strengthens a unit is the best way I can describe it. And it, it's a pain in the butt. Um, you don't like them. Uh, you're not supposed to like them. <laughs> um, but anyways, uh, those are what the depth do. And then I have these upside down 
largely because I want to show them to you, but you need to randomize these as well. This, these are uh, the reinforcement markers, and you can see this one has a T over here. That stands for tactical reinforcements, and so these are the tactical reinforcement pile. And you can see they just, they all look the same, right? Um, they don't have a T on the top, and they're not supposed to, but, um, but they are tactical reinforcements, and see these are M's. So these are, I think, the mobile reinforcements. And then uh, there's a D, which I don't remember what D stands for. We can find it in a, in a little bit. But these are the D reinforcements. And um, they are all different. So make sure they each have their own separate pile. And of course, my attempt to shuffle them with one hand is disastrous. But uh, we'll, we'll get that sorted out. Now, an optional variant is to have these tanks in the game with the armor depth. Uh, I'm gonna set it up. I have no idea if I wanna play with tanks. I've never played, this is all part of the extended game and I don't even know what the rules are. So um, I'll set it up and, uh, and then uh, I'll read the optional rule and see if we can make it work. Uh, we might not be able to. So one thing I can tell you is that most of this stuff goes up here into this corner and I can put this camera down and so you can see that I have, for example, mobile depth markers. And I put this here, and it says that there's 20 of them. So I should have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, uh-oh. Yep, 7, 8, 9, and 10. And then here's the rest. And that doesn't look like an even stack. So 1... Eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Okay, so obviously I have more than ten. That means I need to put mobile depth markers somewhere else. So let's get out the rule book and I'll take you through it. But basically that's where everything goes, is they're gonna all go here. And by the way, the D stands for division. It's written right there. So um uh, here you can see four mobile death markers go here. So one, two, three, four. And now I bet it's going to be an equal amount of 20. So let me put those side by side. And sure enough, we have two stacks of 10 that are both equal height. So sorry, I, I count like poker chips. <laughs> All right, so here's the, the here it's, here's the word, Widerstandsnest. Um, I totally butchered that. I apologize to every German watcher out there. Um, it wasn't my intent. So it says nine markers. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Um, oh, those are the depth markers. My apologies. Uh, these are not depth markers. Let me get those back. I dropped a bunch. Here's four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now I have a lot bigger stack, but I'm assuming that's because they're going to be set up. So then we have the German division reinforcements. It says 11 units. So I'm counting here. Three, six, nine, 11. And these are those D units I was talking about. And um, when you put them down, see, they, they just have the infantry symbol. They don't tell you that they're division, other than the fact that they're in this box. So you have to be really careful not to get them mixed up. And there's the tactical ones, and then the, uh, the building ones. Oh. All right, well, we'll, we'll figure that out in a second. Uh, this is the building depth markers. Yep, those are the building depth. Okay, so let's do setup and we'll get the rest of this figured out. And I think that might explain a few things that, that I'm missing here. So uh, the rule book has this described on page eight. So I'm gonna set the rule book up here. Well, that's not a good spot. 
I'll set it over here. And all right, so it says mix together the WN depth markers face down and place one on the following nine positions. Okay, so I'm not going to remember all these, so we're going to just do three at a time 60, 61, and 62 north. Okay, so um, now there's there's the WN depth markers there. There's nine of them, but remember there was a bunch more that are still here. So what it's saying is, is we need to put some in 60, and these are, of course, you're not supposed to look at them. 61, and then 61 north, or 62 north, which is there. And now this one, take note that that says 88. See, it says 88 right there, and I'm willing to bet that this 88 is going to go over top. So I'm going to preemptively do that. But let's go see what the rule book says. OK, so 60, 61, 62 north, 65 north, 66 north, 68 north. All right, so I'm going to put this down so we can keep it from folding up. So 65, 66, and 68. So the north and south just shows that um, let me show you here. Um, this red here, you can see this is a section, this is a 65 site, and there's south and north. So there's two locations that the Germans occupy. And um, they work together. I know I haven't explained the board fully yet, but um, 65 north, 66 north, 68 north. So let's get those before I forget it again. So 65 North gets one. Oh no, not those. Where is it? Sixty-five North gets a depth marker, but South doesn't. And then sixty-six North gets one. And then sixty-eight North gets one. So Basically, almost everything that's up front, closest to the beach, is getting one. Uh, 70, 72 north, and 73. And, and sure enough, there's three of these left. And, and the other thing that's nice is the numbers go from left to right. So if you'll notice, we're just moving the camera from left to right here. So uh, 70, 72 north, and then they said 73, which is just off, right next to the... To the instructions here. Okay, so that's this section up here. And it says place the remaining face down in the depth box. We did that. And then it says mix together the 18 WN units face down and place them on the map. Place the two 88 markers on 61 and 72. So this one is 61 and then the other 88 marker is going to go on 72 which is actually back here. It's not over the depth marker. See, that's 72 north. 72 south has an 88. So remember, those are the observing 88s. All right. So now it's saying... Place the six units with artillery symbols on WN position 60, 62. Yeah, so we got to go through a bunch here. So 60... Um, has a dot, and I think that means it's artillery. That's how we know. And so we have to place the six units with artillery symbols. All right, so I think it doesn't matter which one. So we're going to put uh, this one, the 105 on there, and then we'll grab one from the... No, 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 I'm sorry, I'm grabbing the wrong thing again. So, these ones. I have these, they have the WN on them. Always pay attention to the WN. So that's a WN 75, and these are all 75. So that's the reason, oh, that was supposed to be turned over. Okay. 62S, 65S. All right, so 62 South is there. Let me zoom out again. So 
I know you can't really read the numbers as well when I zoom out, but you'll at least see what I'm doing. 65S, and they're pretty easy to see because see that little black dot in the middle? There's no black dot over here. So uh, it's pretty easy to see which ones are going to get one. Like I'm willing to bet that 68S is the next one listed. And sure enough, it is. And so is 70 and 73. So we're gonna come across and 70 is just covered up because you have that there. So it's gonna have a depth marker underneath it. And then 73 is another one of those with a depth marker underneath it, but it's also an observing. <laughs> so those are all the observers for the artillery. That's the reason why <laughs> those are um, special placements. Then it says you gotta place the rocket unit on WN69. So there's one rocket unit, uh, this one, and it goes on 69. So once again, you gotta look around and find 69. And WN69, in this case, the rocket unit is actually really far back. I guess because the rockets can shoot pretty far. So uh, that's a pain to get to. It's hard to get there with your, your military. So they'll be harassing us, potentially. Um, and then you place the remaining nine units on the remaining position. So that's where these come in. They don't have any artillery on them, they're just the remaining ones. And so you just look around and see where there isn't one, and that's where you place it. So one goes there on the depth marker, uh, one goes here, and then as we come across, you can see this depth marker needs one, and then this one didn't have one at all. This depth marker needs one, and 71 needs one, and then there's a depth marker here that needs one, and now I have two left, and that's because I probably just missed one, and sure enough, I missed. Now, you gotta notice there's a WN here, and then there's other spots that don't have a WN written on them. That's the thing you gotta pay attention to. So there's one there, and there's one more somewhere, and I just need to find it. Oh, where are you? And there it is. It's way back here. So this particular one is pretty well defended all the way back. Okay, so I'm gonna get these poker chips out of here. So now it says you gotta place the four artillery units in their spaces. And so uh, that part, I'm just gonna show you. Uh, there are these four artillery uh, tiles. They look like that. And they go here, and they represent that they're actually positioned off map. So right here, you can see this is the German Artillery West, so it says it's the 1352. And then it tells you wh where the observers are. It's in the WN66, 68, and D4. That's where their observers can be. And then you have an 88 also positioned here, the first flak. So you put both of those there, and if we ever take out all of these positions and there's no observers left, then the artillery becomes inactive. They can no longer support the Germans in defending the beach. And the other side of the map has the exact same thing. So we have the 1352, and then we have another flak. So I like to put them up high so you can still see the observing spots, but you can cover them up. It's whatever you choose to do. There should be plenty of room for everything. Okay. All right, so. Okay, these units with an M on them are the Camp Group Meyer. They go here with the mobile depth markers. And so the next thing that they're telling us to do is this exact thing that I already did up there. So, then it explains to place eight US tanks, which is what I did here. So we're supposed to do that. Place the turn marker on turn one, shuffle the cards, 
and you're ready to play. So uh, setup is not as bad as you might think. If you have an organized system for these tiles, it can be pretty simple. Um, I think the biggest pain in the butt, to be quite honest, is sorting all of those, because you know I have them all mixed together. I do try to keep two and two, you know, separate. Um, and then of course sorting all that stuff up there, you got to find the number and make sure they're in the right pile. That's really the longest thing. Uh, everything else I keep separate from each other. I even keep these starter tanks in a separate section. Uh, the cards that they're referring to are these, and you just need to shuffle them, and we'll go over those as they encounter them. And um, there is one special card. This is just really uh, meant to be a helpful guide for you, so just keep it off to the side. So how do I interpret this game? What's going on? Um, I think a lot of people have probably seen this game before, um, but just in case you haven't, I have to assume that you haven't. And so <clears throat> we're going to start with that. Um, the German units, these are basically pillboxes, or I don't, you know, the, the Wiedersnitz or whatever they're called. They're basically nests. And they're positioned up high on a cliff. And these little, this map has uh, a lot of iconography that we have to actually learn. Uh, otherwise, uh, for example, there's a pavilion draw, okay? So what it's referring to there is that's this area here that's off the beach and then further in. That's considered a draw. I guess that's an area that you can maybe drive tanks on because it's more like a, a road or a, a slight elevation. Those are, are actually your objective in the basic game is you need to take the draws and you get points for taking them. And then, of course, you got the beach and then there's water lines. But there's high ground, and it is going to be darker. So that's how you know that, you know, for a beach to high ground, and you can see it, if I turn the camera a little bit, you can see that this is high ground. See how that's a darker color than this? So you know that you're shooting up. Um, another indicator of that is you can see here this dot, dash gray line. That's a slope. A dashed maroon-looking line is a bluff. And then there's what's called a scalable cliff, which is a solid gray line, and then there's a sheer cliff. Okay, so this is a scalable cliff. That's a sheer cliff. This is uh, the, the bluff, and this gray line there is a slope. So you see how there's like four different types of things all right next to each other. And you have to know <laughs> uh, what you're on and why because every, uh, in the rule book, every one of these has rules. So for example, this is that slope, the dash gray line. Yes, infantry can move. Yes, leaders can move. No, other units can't unless there's a road. And then the Germans get unit and depth doubled. Both of them are doubled if you're trying to attack them from the beach. Now, the, the dashed red line is, yes, an infantry can do it, but they have to climb first. The leader can do it, yes, but there's a sub-note, uh, so there's probably some special condition we got to read. Tanks can't do it unless it's a road, and you can't attack a German position at all that's on top of one of those. And then you can see here um, the scalable cliff. They have to do a climb cliff action, which is different than a climb action. Tanks can't do it at all, and of course there's no attacks and etc. And leaders can't go. Here the sheer cliff, nobody can go up a sheer cliff. You just gotta ignore that. So there's a lot of um a lot of rules like that that we have to get accustomed to to uh play this game. And I I will tell you it's overwhelming. Uh it's not that any of them are difficult, they're all simple. This chart is simple. But when you're playing your first game and you're getting the hang of it, you're going to slow down a lot because you have to look this stuff up. And then you start to memorize things and then it gets quicker and it's not so bad. Um, but then, then your next pitfall is, is you thought you remembered it correctly and you ended up remembering it incorrectly and then you played it wrong half the game. <laughs> so uh, that happens too. 
Um, okay, so there are buildings, and that's important because if a German's in a building, that's different than if a German's not in a building, and you can see that here. That's a building, that's not a building. But this is a, uh, what is that called, a bocage, bocage? Um, it's the hedgerows, is what we would call it. Um, so hedgerows actually mean something in this game, and so um, they all have some definition. Um, there's mined trails, there's trails, and then there's roads, uh, and primary roads. There's all kinds of stuff going on. Uh, but the things that um, I think is important for you to know right now at the start of the game is you need to know that these are the German nests, easy enough, and these are red nests. See how it has red there? And this is a blue nest. And so then you will see these little blue circles and they will face the hex in the direction of the nest that's responsible for the blue circle. So this nest is shooting in everywhere you see a blue circle. And the blue circle is always going to be on the side of the hex pointing to where that the source of it is from. So it is possible that you could have two different sources of the same color uh, butting up against each other. So for example, over here, it's not the best example, but see how you have a purple nest there and a purple nest there? These circles are on this side of the hex showing that it's coming from that nest, whereas this purple here is on that side, so you don't ever get confused that it's coming from here. And even this purple here, you can see it's facing that way, so you know it's coming from this nest. So if I ever kill these guys here, then this purple is now no longer a danger zone for me. And even if there is a guy sitting here, he's not shooting there, even though that's purple. Okay, does that make sense? Um, so these guys have a shooting radius. And obviously this one's in the hedgerows, so that's the reason why um, his shooting radius is so short. I mean, he can't shoot all the way to the beach. He doesn't have a view of it. But here you could see, look, there's a purple here, and that purple is on this side of the hex, so it belongs to him. There, right there. So he does have some purple extending out. And anyways, I, you probably understood this 15 minutes ago, but um, it's very important. And, and what I think is so beautiful about this game is that they thought of that. And so all these d dots and stuff, you're like, oh my God, what am I looking at? This looks, this looks like a math problem. It's really not, and it's just, it's a beautiful, eloquent way of, of uh, visually showing where these different nests shoot. So, um, I'm not actually playing the game yet, but these are gonna land on the beach. And this is what's called, um, oh, why don't I remember? It's steady fire, heavy fire, consistent fire, steady fire. So, uh, there's three things you need to know about. See this circle with a, with a blank in it? That's called sporadic fire. These uh, little half circles, those are called steady fire, and then that's intense fire, the solid circles. So the, um, the nest is going to be shooting, and it will prioritize the solid circles first, and then these half circles second, and then the sporadic ones third. So... Where do I want my unit to be that's gonna have the least likely chance of getting hit? Clearly, I want it to be up there. This is a very bad spot. But the only way I can get from here to there is to go through it. And that's, that's part of the anxiety and stress of this game is um, if you ever watch Saving Private Ryan, he, you know he's telling everybody to get off the beach. That's exactly what you gotta do. You gotta get off the beach. <laughs> and um, this game really represents that very, very well. Um, but the act of getting off the beach requires you to go through some pretty heavy fire. Now, um, this is where uh, a lot of luck comes in. And probably the largest criticism of the game that I've experienced from people is that they feel like, you know, it's just too lucky, you know. And, and here's why. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just grab a card out of the middle of the deck, right? So let's say I drew this card. This is classic, you know, Butterfield type of card. The top is used for one phase of the game. This is used for a different phase of the game. But when it comes to Germans firing, we use this bottom phase. So what you see here is you see gold, blue, and brown. Well, the gold is over here. You can see it off to the left of the camera. You can see the blue, and then uh, there is no brown. Well, there is brown over here, but 
but uh, we'll get to that in a second. So you'll notice there's no red. So that means this nest does not fire this turn. So if I was here, I would not get hit by the red, but I would get hit by the blue. And this one, both red and blue have the same kill zone. If I was over here, I would get hit by the red, but not necessarily by the blue, because there's different rules with the half circle. So um, it's pure luck. I mean, what one did you draw? I have no idea. You know, there you can see, I had to go through a couple cards before I got to the red one. So there you can see red. And then each of these letters and symbols, they all mean something. We'll go over those <laughs> as we encounter them. Uh, I think um, the big things to understand for now is just the basic idea of, of these kill zones. And <clears throat> there are some uh, player aids that are wonderful. So like this one here, I'm going to just lay this down. And you can see, intense fire priority, it's saying that units of every type gets, loses a step, which means they take a damage. Doesn't matter what you are, you take a damage if you're in a solid circle. Solid circles stink. You don't want to be in them. If, and it's saying that this is if it's from a WN position versus a reinforcement position. Take note, there are no reinforcements on the board at this point. We're only using the first column right now at this phase of the game. And so, you know, things will happen as the game goes on, and this third column is just for the extended game. Now, if you're in a steady fire, you can see that armor does not take damage in a steady fire unless there's a special symbol, and I'll show you that symbol. But, um, see, non-armored units with the target symbol indicated on the fire card lose a step. So it's saying that infantry units or anything that's not an armor, will take damage only if it matches the symbol. So let's once again grab a card, and here you'll see what I mean. So let's say blue is hitting you in a steady fire. You have to have a circle on your unit. And you can see here I have a, a tank with a circle, and I have a tank with a diamond. That's where the shape on the unit matters. Now, what did we say, though? Tanks don't get hit in that situation, and they wouldn't. However, this is a perfect example. See that little circle there? That's a, that's a symbol for armor. So this brown German unit would hit tanks, even in a steady circle, but only if, or a steady, um, steady fire zone, but only if your tank has a circle. If my tank had a diamond, even though this is a tank symbol, the brown still wouldn't hit my tank. So the shape that comes up greatly dictates whether or not your units survive. Now, if you're in those, uh, this intense fire, what it's saying is it doesn't matter what your shape is. You're getting hit. So it hits you no matter what your shape is. But in, when you're in these steady zones, you have a little bit better chance of not getting hit because not only do they, you have to get the right color, right? Because there's only three colors here. Um, so it's possible they won't even draw your color but even if they do draw your color, they have to also draw your shape. Now you may notice one more thing. There's some that have a two on here and there's some that are only one. And, and that's a simple explanation. The two means that um, you have to have depth. So this unit here with a depth marker um, will be able to fire. So let's like say that this was two red. That means that this unit can fire. But see, this says two blue. This blue unit only has one unit underneath it. That unit will not fire. Even though we drew blue, it does not have a depth marker. So we still skip that one. That one still does not fire this round. So um, you can see there's a lot of depth, pun intended, um, in these AI cards. <coughs> and they're not very overwhelming. I mean, the, the, it's very elegant and simple, and you can fly through a turn uh, pretty well. You're not gonna spend a lot of time on AI with this, but every one of these has rules and then more rules, and that's the, where the anxiety I was talking about in the beginning come in. Okay, so, <laughs> um, and then these letters, A and R, those are only used in the extended game, so we don't have to worry about them until we get to turn 17. Okay, so you got the basic idea, and then, the last one here is sporadic fire. It's saying, uh, so basically you're gonna get disrupted. And what disrupted means is 
you basically lose a turn. So you'll spend a whole round where your only action is removing the disruption marker. Okay, uh, what else? The US weapons chart, uh, we'll explain that when we do our first, uh, start attacking. And I'll do that in video two. And then I will go over this in video two. This is the uh, amphibious result table. The only thing that's worth pointing out is in my version of the game, uh, on turn two and three, the tank result, see what I have circled there? Drift three boxes east. That text is supposed to be in this column for D. It was incorrectly put in column C. Column C just says lose one step. So that whole thing, just circle it and put an arrow. It's supposed to be here. So I wrote on it. I, I don't know. I don't plan on selling it. This is a wonderful game. So um, there are other things. This is the extended play sequence. We'll get over those when we get there. This one is summary of priorities. So sometimes you have to do something for the AI, like, like they're going to do a mortar action or they're going to do a redeploy. Well, then you come here and you can see first you redeploy here, but if that doesn't work, then redeploy. That's what this is. These are the logic steps that you have to go through to, in the AI priority. Um, and these are for, all of this is for the extended game. And this even says 17 to 32. So you don't use this side, but, but you do use this side. Because there's artillery that's going to be firing at us. And this is determining who gets hit if the artillery fires. Um, if a new depth marker has to be placed, this is our priority for how to place one. I'll get into that in video two when we actually have to place one. But it's a wonderful player aid. So just make sure you have that out. You're going to use it. <clears throat> this one, you're going to use. In fact, you're going to be flipping this one back and forth over and over again. Uh, but at the start of the game, you're going to use the amphibious result table. And then this one is just for the introductory scenario. Um, if you're really intimidated by this game, do this. Uh, it's not even the basic scenario I keep talking about. It's not the scenario that um, Dan Lykos, or Lykos did in his video. He did the, the basic scenario. This is an introductory scenario that's not even the basic scenario. So... Um, in GMT world, this would be what you would call the playthrough. So uh, we're not doing this. Just skip all that. Um, if you watch my video, you can skip it too. Um, I'm going to get you to a point where you can at least play the basic scenario. Um, this side, though, is your combat results and how you resolve results. It also shows the different symbols on the cards. <clears throat> it's very, very helpful. Um, make sure you have this out. Uh, it's a must-have chart. As far as the rule book goes, other than looking up actual rules, you're gonna need two things with it. This chart here, I wish they made a printout of, and I probably should go on Board Game Geek. They probably have, some geek probably did do that for me. And this chart is for uh, tank movement, when tanks are actually on the board. And then this last chart is a must have chart, but it's more for uh, resolving turns 17 through 32, and it even says it up here. And so see all these different letters? They mean something um, uh, in turn 17 through 32, but we don't use those yet. So, so the rule book you're gonna wanna have here, other than obviously looking up specific rules. All right, so that was one hour for setup and basic introduction. Um, I could probably spend another 30 minutes. It, there's a lot to it, and I will go through the rest. Uh, let's get started. So, um, Thank you very much. Stay awesome.